I'm, I've literally started like having this thing where I'm like, I'm going to be way more comfortable in the future if it's a group of like five <coughs> to six people. Yeah. Like, hey, can I take it a picture? One at a time. Nope. And I get to hide behind them and I put my arms around them. Uh, Boom. My, lo- my, my little face peeks through. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Maybe I give one of them a quick kiss on the cheek. They're like, I'm going to remember that forever. <laughs> 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 that's what they would do that's definitely what they'd say they'd be like i hope i run into youtube animator and creator meet canyon on the street so you can kiss me I on the no cheek. idea what he looks like i would yeah. never forget that moment i would never forget that if he kissed me on the cheek <laughs> <laughs> bingo my name is stretch this is the last time you mess with stretch ah! Fate. People of the universe, welcome. Episode two of the Stretch and Fate podcast. We are, it's a beautiful, what's the day today? Wednesday. It's a beautiful Wednesday evening, Wednesday evening. What'd you do today, dude? I, uh, I started a new cartoon. I've just been fucking playing a little bit of, dude, honestly, just kind of being a little bit of a de- degenerate and playing some games. Dude, that's where I, I went wrong in life. I didn't dedicate enough of my time to be good enough at games. I got mm-hmm. overweight, and now I can't even make money streaming from it. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you're not good enough. You're not entertaining enough. Yeah. No. no oh, absolutely not. No, well, that no. that time has passed anyway. You know, <laughs> Twitch is not a gaming platform. All right. You saw what happened to Ninja. That that's dude true. is a crackhead now. That's true. I just I, I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of clips, and I get a lot of stuff from uh, what is it? Like Tim the Tap Man and stuff, and all those guys. Yeah. yeah. And they do the, where people, where they, it's like their whole thing is on like Twitch or streaming, and then they take clips and make YouTube videos of it. Yep. But it's like really high intensity. And I really, the one thing I just don't like about Twitch culture is the like, the thing of like being like chat. Like yeah. they say, like they, they talk to chat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why not? So as he's sitting there and they're just, I it just, it creeps me out. Chat, how are you? Well, yeah, I just don't like that. Like, if I sat there and I was like, comment down below something, sure, that's a prompt. But he's sitting there, he's like, chat, I don't know about this. You know, like, let's say Call of Duty. Chat, I don't know about this gun, man. I think that I think whoever said this gun is good, it's cap. Like, that sentence alone, I just don't like that as a whole. Like, I'm like, that, that I just don't vibe with that at all. You know what I mean? Well, I'm just referring to a mass of people as a singular unit. Yeah. Like they're and all- it's just a, te- a wall of text going... Yeah. And people are like hey, t- typing. I just don't. I, I just don't. I don't vibe with it. And the thing is, is you know why? Is because I'm jealous. I'm envious. <laughs> I want that so bad. I want that so bad for myself, just so I could make tons of fucking money, and I could just be doing whatever. I could be eating Chipotle on stream. And that's another thing I don't get is that people on Twitch they eat on stream. Yeah. What's where's the shame? There's no such thing as shame anymore, dude. Eating at work? No, they don't care, bro. I'm just laughing because you know you uh when you say like the, the, they're calling out the chat sorry i just my brain just completely eviscerated there for a second from my spinal yeah, cord what, and i had no motor function yeah what the fuck happened what's what's what did, what did you do today finish your thought and then tell me what's what's going on with you because you look dazed dude no, no no i'm good you look fucked up no no no. i'm fine i'm laughing at the idea of a twitch streamer browsing like really expensive shit being like chat i don't know kind of steep and then the donos just go crazy. With everybody, everybody in uh everybody in the social media sphere, uh, they all hide their wealth. And Twitch people do it a lot too with like they kind of do the Philip DeFranco thing mm. where Philip DeFranco <laughs> You guys can't see it, but Hunter's trying to set up his I iPhone. I have to use my iPhone. <laughs> so I can see him on Fuck. Zoom. And <laughs> it looks <laughs> so like shitty. He's just perpetually falling down. <laughs> I fucking hate this. Why are you not working, bitch? Jesus Christ, just fucking stay. <laughs> All right. Fuck, I'm not even going to touch anything. I'm not going to move. It's going to fall down again. I already know it's going to fall it down again. Like you Fuck just me. falling out of your chair multiple times. <laughs> and so, yeah, it looks like I'm just, my fat ass is just <laughs> rolling out of my Herman Miller chair, which are very expensive, but they're ergonomic kings. Okay. <laughs> if anybody, if you have to donate plasma... To buy yourself a Herman Miller computer chair, I would recommend it. Yeah, go do it, man. Your plasma. What was I even saying? 
streamers and people like Philip DeFranco yeah, or whoever, they, they, yeah. they, they, they're kind of, well, see, you, you couldn't do it. If you were streaming, you might be able to pull this off, but you have the nice fancy couch in the back. It looks a little too bougie. <laughs> Everybody's always in a room with a fucking bed and they're just like, oh, he's one of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, they're one of us. Yeah. It's actually so funny to have a $20 million place and you catfish as a regular person just having a, a random mattress and a neon sign. Yeah, I I, I think it, what always carries through, too, is that like men, especially young men, don't know how to decorate at all. So yeah. no matter what, it's just blank walls everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Everywhere. So any streamer, they're ho hawking down fucking ramen or Chipotle on stream playing games, and it just looks like they're in a fucking asylum. Yeah. You know, blank walls. <laughs> Everything is just uh, it, it's a it, it's a very void space. But you yeah. know, it's how it's how you manipulate your audience, dude. You got to manipulate your audience. Yeah, or we're not making money. You know. Yeah, if you're not if you're not completely just uh, shilling for the common man by way of looking mm. absolutely normal. I mean, what do you what are you even doing? Are you even a businessman at this point? Do you even care about making money? Yeah, that's uh people would like to say that that person is uh you know, they're slacking on the grind. Yeah. As they say. Yeah. I would love to yeah. see it would have been man. I'd love to see like the Paul brothers try to pretend to be regular. You know? Just just try. They already have a well they, it's impossible because they're already too good looking. You think? I think so. Yeah. I think Logan and Jake are I mean they they're handsome. <laughs> Just, I mean, there's, I mean, conventionally, I would say they're very attractive people. You just have grinded so many gears. People <laughs> have are like, I? yeah, oh yeah, dude. I, I think there is this. Any, uh, it, sorry, any man or woman that are like, no, you're lying. Like in terms of like, so, just scientifically, geom, like <clears throat> the geometry, the symmetry of the geometry, fucks it. The symmetry <laughs> of their face is like, it, it's good. They got, they got good genes. You know what are you supposed to do? Hunter has a picture of the Paul brothers in his office, and he has the Fibonacci scale just printed onto their uh, jaw bones and stuff to prove that they I have do. perfectly symmetrical face. No, there's like a, uh, I, I I would agree they are conventionally attractive people. They're, I think with how much success they've had, I think it really pains people to admit mm. that they have any positive qualities. Oh, here you go. <laughs> This is going to be so good. You, you know, I'm just going to, should I just turn off my fucking webcam, dude? This is just going to be distracting. No. What if I just gave you this shot the whole time? <laughs> just my fucking, my tits and my belly. Fuck. And this it's, it's already falling forward, I think. Is it falling forward? I can't tell. <laughs> if I just do this, I'm going to do, if I do it like this, it's going to, it will not move now. I actually, I promise you it won't move. This is good. No, this is good. Anyway, yeah. No, I think people struggle to admit that those guys have redeeming qualities because they hate how successful they've become. Charismatic. I think Logan is more charismatic than Jake. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jake Jake kind of comes across like I'm uh, just a fucking idiot, honestly, a lot of the time. Like I don't I've never talked with him, but he's not like if I had a conversation with him, I don't think it would be as entertaining or as interesting as if I sat down with like Logan. No. I I think but I I do think that Jake puts on that he's dumber than he is sometimes because you got to be kind of, you got to be kind of smart to be where he's at. You can't be a total. Oh, oh, I'm not saying that he's dumb. I'm definitely not saying he's dumb. I'm just saying that he gives off the vibe. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Like I think that like people can be. You ever see this movie called Rain Man? Um, I don't think I've Dustin seen Dustin Hoffman, Man. Tom Cruise. No, I don't think I've seen Rain Man. Dustin Hoffman is a highly autistic, borderline Down syndrome man. Got it. That can he can. He's hyper intelligent, Got but it. he's uh, special. <laughs> Logan Paul or J Jake Paul is like Jake Paul is Rain it's Man. like Jake Paul is like radio. If radio was like really good at business, yeah. <laughs> if, if 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 radio was really good at starting up LLCs that just like. Got and he was good about like talking with investors. Like, sure, he's like getting in the the you know the shopping cart and he's going down the hill and he's like, ah! <laughs> and he has the radios and stuff and he's still getting like bullied by a high school football team. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he like can go into a stock meeting. He can go to like a network meeting and just be like, I mean, this is like our capital. We're looking for this much up front for this kind of equity and stake, and we're looking to pay that off in like you know six quarters or you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He has that switch. 
Yeah. And I think that's 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 very redeemable. That's a redeeming quality. That's it. <laughs> I just talked myself into like I, I now I want to sit down with Jake Paul. Yeah. And I just want to be like, what's you know, what's up? Hello, everyone. We want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Stamps. Wow. Hunter, can you believe it? It's already March. Oh, my God. I know. Um, and as a guy on a worldwide comedy tour, I have a lot going on. Uh, this year has seriously <laughs> flown by. No, seriously, this year has flown by. And thankfully, I've been able to plan ahead to save time. Uh, Stamps helps me simplify my shipping needs so I can manage my time stress-free. 2023 is already well underway, so don't wait any longer to level up your small business. Some of you listeners, you probably got a little business out there. You probably want to level it up, right? Uh, you can set your year up for success with Stamps. Get ahead of the competition uh, with mailing and shipping through Stamps.com. Stamps.com lets you print your own postage and shipping labels right from your home or office. It's ready to go in minutes, so you can get back to running your business sooner. It's a stress-free solution for every small business. Use Stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer. <laughs> wow. They even send you a free scale, so you'll have everything you need to get started. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through Stamps.com's dashboard. Stamps automatically tell you the cheapest and fastest shipping options. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Set your business up for success when you get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up at Stamps.com slash stretch for a special offer that includes a four-week trial free postage and a free digital scale no long-term commitments or contracts just go to stamps.com slash stretch i mean i think he would i think he's definitely smart enough to know when to like turn it on and uh but you, you yeah get, it's interesting because i know you love youtube boxing you love youtube boxing i don't i hate it yeah, no come on man tell the truth you love it i hate it you literally called me the other day you're like my favorite thing ever is when YouTubers get together <laughs> in a box. True. I told you the complete opposite. You were like, dude. The only YouTube boxing event I liked was the Creator Jake Clash Paul one. versus Anderson Silva. You were so stoked. <laughs> 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 no. No, it's not true. I liked Creator Clash because it was funny seeing everybody who like kind of trained fight. But even that, it's like... I, like I, I wonder how much merit that has over time. You know what I mean? I think it's for a good cause. I think it's cool to do things for a good cause. But in terms of like, what do I watch? I would rather much honestly. Yeah, this is who I am. I'm not a person. I don't like watching fights. Yeah. You know why the fuck do I care? I want to see. You know what was always my favorite thing? Celebrity, uh, the softball games that they do in the stadiums. They pack people into fucking professional major league baseball stadiums, and I've all these fat seen, fucking celebrities I've would not do. Seen one celebrity? Yeah, is that one of those? Oh, it's classic. See now, see that, that this is maybe that's what I'll do. I'll do a cele- I'll do a YouTube Twitch. Uh, softball league yeah and then people can get fucking jerseys mm. right mm. and then people can root for their team and it would be an actual touring thing so yeah. you could go and you could rent out a fucking double a triple a baseball stadium you pack that bitch in with people all sorts of people yeah and then you y- yeah you serve hot dogs you know <laughs> <laughs> that's just where that's the period fucking in <laughs> you serve hot dogs <laughs> outside drinks you're, are allowed because we're not selling them shut you up right there you just thought of the word you hot, serve, dog uh, hot dogs just gonna keep going uh, hot dogs <laughs> ballpark franks <laughs> oh my god damn no. would you uh, well, honestly would you would you want to keep doing would you want to keep doing uh, creator boxing, and yes, you get to see people get beat up, but is it not funner to see a team of people you like compete against a team, you know, like a, a league? Yeah, a no, baseball I, league. No, I'm, I'm all about competitive sports. Sorry, you just made me think about radio giving a pitch, and then someone, <laughs> someone <laughs> unintentionally brings a radio into the room, <laughs> then the switch turns off. And yeah, he's, no he's in business mode. He's all dressed up. He wipes the spit off of his belly and his lips and stuff like that on the drool. And he sits there and he's like, <laughs> and someone's oh like, actually, by the way, I forgot. I don't know his name, so I'm just gonna say Herman Miller because we brought up the chair name. <laughs> Herman, uh, do you like this 1963 like <laughs> vagabond uh, radio? And he's just like, oh no, They're trying to impress him. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. We got this for you, Herman. We're very excited for this deal. And he's just like, yeah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> Everyone's clapping, and then he gets scared because there's too much noise. Oh, no. He has to cover his ears and run out of the room. <laughs> He's like, ah! <laughs> run out of the room. God damn. Anyway, to answer your question, yeah, no, I mean, since forever, I've wanted to, because every production I've seen of it has been horrible. Actually, well, by it, I mean, I would have loved to see just like, you know, uh, like a racing league with creative people. You know, I just think it'd be fun. Uh, but shut up. Actually, this, I think like this French YouTuber is like the French PewDiePie equivalent. It's, it's actually pretty interesting. He got a bunch of people and they had their own like Formula 2 race and they they drove in driver pairs. So it was like random creators were paired with each other and they raced as teams against each other in like actual race cars. I thought that was cool. That is insane. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's, uh, that, I feel like that'd be very expensive. Definitely. I, I don't know how they even pulled that off in terms of money, but I thought that was pretty sick. Pretty bold. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for gl gliding us right, just grinding us right into a halt, dude. I appreciate that with your sports car talk. Sorry, dude. I, I mean, I can't stop. You know what's funny about baseball is that you can be the fattest person on earth and still play. That is true. That is true. So it's fun for everybody. Yours is petite. You're like a you, you're like the kind of guy where you're like, I love competitive horse racing, where you have to be four foot eight and weigh sixty three pounds to race. Listen, I'm hey. four foot nine, seventy pounds. <laughs> that Shut is true. Fucking mouth. That is true. I was I was thinking about um the other day. I was thinking about when we recorded back, Hold up, are back you, there. Are you saying my interests are like body shamist? No, I just think I think that you just your your perspective is skewed because you're such a tiny man. Damn, let me go kill myself real quick. I don't think you have to kill yourself. I'm, I'm just joking, saying, I'm like, joking, I'm joking. my interest, my interest. My dog just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> no, you're right. No, 100, percent you're right. My my interests are drinking and eating food. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm a large fat man, so it's just it's all about perspective. No, I like right? I like petite boys activities. PBA. Okay. All right, he's. Not petite boys, petite men. You know, you like you like stuff with adults, not just children. <laughs> I'm saving you right now, dude. All right. <laughs> have you ever have you have you ever met Logan? I've Paul never hung out Paul? with a boy. No, I've never hung out with a little boy. <laughs> you definitely have. That's not true. I went over to your house one time. You're like, hey, come on in. This is if, how you, if you want to diet, back, if you want to diet, if you want to diet coke, if you want to diet coke and a Capri Sun, uh, don't don't worry about Jacob. And he's like, hi. I'm like, all right. I look at the kid. I'm like, who's that? Oh, it's Jacob. He's been here for about three days. I'm like, who is he? And he just says hi. And you just snapped at him. <laughs> one loud snap <laughs> with your with your finger. Bam. <laughs> and I said, go make my shoes. Have you ever have you ever met Logan or Jake Paul? I feel like I've asked you that before. Mm. Have I asked you that before? Have you ever met them? Maybe. I've not met Jake. Uh Cody and I were on a flight and Logan was on the flight. He just kind of looked at us and we looked at him and just didn't say anything. And then uh Is there is, is there some like weird beef between you guys? Like do you do you feel like do you feel like they would badmouth you the way that you guys have badmouthed them? Um I don't think so, because I think if, I mean, you know, Jake obviously tried the whole thing on Cody. I don't think they care about us like that. The most I feel like I've seen is Logan referred to me as Cody's boy. So I think that was him trying to. Oh, I see. So like, kind of like how, <sighs> like, you know, hip hop has really changed the vernacular of the youth today. So people are like, yeah, I know Cody Cohen is boy. Yeah, kind of I think that was either him trying to make me feel bad or was it or i think? i mean that was cody's thought in the moment i thought legitimately i wasn't really on his radar at the time um but yeah. i've heard through other people that uh he uh, doesn't really hold any ill will um i don't really okay. care i don't care about them either way like if they i saw logan at some some thing in miami and uh i was halfway tempted to just go walk up and just say what's up but like I didn't know how he felt towards me, and I don't know if he'd find it as funny as I did. So, uh, but by the time I could work that through, I literally looked to my left, looked to my right, and then he was gone. 
Um, like also, a ghost, some, dude. Yeah, also some kid I went to high school with works with him. So I don't know. But yeah, hmm. it's I, I think like, <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't, I think maybe there was a point where they <clears throat> maybe held on to some of the things that we've said and um, I'm, I don't blame them. But uh, I think at this point they're so fucking successful that how could they care? How could At the end of the day, it's like, who hasn't said stuff about him? People always say, yeah. Hunter, people always say this. They say, Hunter, you have such a successful YouTube channel. Your career is only going up from here, right? You hear that a lot probably too. I walk down the uh, streets. People are like, I've seen those cartoons. I've seen those. And I'm like, I know, I know. And people are always like, oh, you should do one on Logan and Jake Paul. And I'm like, have we not? Like, why? Yeah. Why would I? Yeah. You know? I feel that. Not because they're not interesting people, but at the end of the day, it's just like, bro, it's uh, you, too much saturated waters. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's too much shit. Yeah. How can you, um, what more is there to say? <clears throat> they just are what they are. Yeah. Successful, genetically beautiful <laughs> people that are winning constantly. <laughs> We're ugly, or you're fine. Noel, you're, you're a good looking guy. Ugh. Me. And the Thanks. other grubs, every person that's just in the Midwest, if there's any men listening to this right now, we failed. Like, our, we're done. <laughs> like, even if you're, I, if there's a 12-year-old listening to this right now, you're not going to be that successful. You're not going to be that attractive. <laughs> you have a bad, you just, it's bad. It's a bad time. You Like, evolutionary science has failed us. <laughs> that's why I'm a religious man, because of the genetics I have. That's fair. Tiny dick, big <clears throat> balls, and just, I, I gain weight, like, crazy. Hey, man, I, you know, I'm... I'm genetically cursed too, you know. Good looking doesn't really help if you're vertically challenged. I mean, it helps. It softens the blow, but you're still eye level with the towel rack, and that sucks. Here, here's the thing, though, dude. You could fake. You could fake it, and you've already made it. So technically, all you have to do is just keep faking it, mm. because people don't understand the perception of height from you. Like right now, in your room, they you you could say you're whatever height, because no one's there. Now, I wouldn't. If I were you, I wouldn't take pictures. Like I don't take pictures of people because I'm so wide and I'm bubbly. <laughs> so if someone's like, "Hey, man, can I snap a pic?" I would. If I were you, I'd bring a box and I'd stand on the box and I'd be like above them, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah, like man. look down. There's plenty of photos out of there, out there of me, <laughs> looking fucking petite, petite man. <laughs> There's so many pictures of me just looking like a fucking Russian nesting doll, dude. <laughs> It's it's bullshit. I'm I've literally started like having this thing where I'm like I'm gonna be way more comfortable in the future if it's a group of like five <coughs> to six people. Yeah. Like, hey, can I take it a picture one at a time? Nope. And I get to hide behind them and I put my arms around them. Uh, Boom. My 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 little face peeks through. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Maybe I give one of them a quick kiss on the cheek. They're like, I'm gonna remember that forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they would do. That's definitely what they'd say. They'd be like, I hope I run into YouTube animator and creator Meat Canyon on the street so you can kiss me I on the no cheek. I have no idea what he looks like. I would yeah. never forget that moment. I would never forget that if he kissed me on the cheek. <laughs> I would never forget that. I saw him at the Burbank Ikea. <clears throat> I don't know why he was there. Dude, sweet. I was in the food court at Ikea. Wouldn't that be the fucking story? <laughs> like, fuck, dude. Really? You caught me here of all places? Oh, the meatballs, right? You're like, hey, fuck off. I'm here for a chair. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm here for a futon, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, you're loading your meatballs in a smoothie. Is that what you're doing? No. No, no, dude. Just keep your... Like, what do you want? Do you want, like, a picture or something? <laughs> I'm like, okay, yes. Okay, right, fine. Dang, that's Let's crazy. Just... Ten meatballs in the cup? It's not ten. It's not ten. It's not ten. It's way more than ten. No, it's... <laughs> He's got one, two, three, four, five. Yo, stop. Stop. The fuck is your fuck problem? Off. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Anytime I go out on stage, I can crack the room if I go, yeah, shorter in person, I know. Like, that's all I have to say. And the whole room just starts. To... <laughs> yeah, he is shorter in person. I had, I did a show like a couple years ago here in LA. <clears throat> and I jokingly referred, or uh, I was like, I was talking to a couple. And then um, the dude goes, I'm a feminist. And then I said, jokingly, I say, oh, is that what you told her? So she'd sleep with you? And then the room's like mm. kind of laughing. <laughs> yeah. I, when I, and then COVID happened and I was doing another show. And then that girl bought tickets to the show and she messaged me. She goes, hey, so stoked. Uh, saw you at the same place a year ago. Awesome to see you again. I was the girl who you called out and you, and she repeats the story. And she goes, so after you said that, 
uh, my boyfriend stormed out of the show. He was so upset that you said that. <laughs> and then uh, we looking actually- Looking up, looking up at you, just like- <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking just blistering mad. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. He broke up with her like two weeks later because the whole thing just like melted down from there, I guess. And made- well, dude, you know, I mean, like the 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 male feminist is a it's 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 a very fragile thing, especially whenever it's like people probably dog on as it is. It's a little brittle. I mean, you know, fuck him, <laughs> pussy. No, I mean, I didn't honestly. <laughs> I just I just thought it was it was related and very funny that because I was reading the message expecting just sort of like. Oh yeah, like I'm I'm stoked to come out to the show again, which is cool. <laughs> it was just like, hey, you made a joke at your last show and ended my relationship. I was like, oh, <laughs> my bad. The motherfucker was not <laughs> happy. Like, not only was he not happy, he was just defeated. Oh my! You know, you just have, you just have one of those days where you just you're not even like it's not even like necessarily mad or set. You're just defeated, dude. You're broken. I just thought I'd, but, you ever feel that way? You ever? Yeah, you ever felt that way, Noah? Yeah, a hundred percent, all the time. Hey everyone, we want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, BetterHelp. You know, therapy is an interesting thing. It can help you learn things about yourself. For example, Mm -hmm. for me, I love racing and I love race cars. And I think that has to do with the time that my dad took me to watch a uh, a race. Mm -hmm. And from that point, he never talked to me again. Oh, yeah. But you know, hey, getting to know yourself is a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. And therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding. Because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. Now, Noel, BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can huh. take you on a journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Okay. Wow. From wherever you are. Wow. You know, therapy for me has really shaped me into the man I am today. More yeah. confident. I, you know, I look at myself better. It's just all in all, it's just made me mentally clear. I think yep. that the broader benefits is it's just got me on the right path. I've been more sociable. Everything <laughs> has just been crystal clear. I mean, it's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers me to be the best version of myself. It isn't just for people who have had major traumatic experiences. It can be just dealing with the little things in life that build up over time and really knock you down. Yeah. And hey, folks, if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is an option, okay? It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash stretch today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash stretch. Give me an example. Um. Okay. What's a day that you've been defeated, dude? Uh, you know, sometimes I lose in Call of Duty. You know, it feels bad. Come on, dude. No, no, no. Um, Come on, dude. <clears throat> What's a day where you've been fucking... Not, like, just fucking broken. Defeated. I they It happens on and off. Um, I have like... Yeah. Yeah, it just happens. Uh, I think after I... I, you know, weirdly, it's almost like clockwork after I do show weekends. I always come home, and then I just doubt myself, brother. It happens all the time. Okay. Even that night in Austin, when you saw me, I like that night I was like, fuck, that was horrible. Can't believe I haven't invited people to come watch that. <laughs> that was a great performance. <clears throat> Thanks, dude. I've, I've been, I've been, uh, I've had moments of just straight defeat. Yeah. Something that's like not even that. It's not even like the weight of the world's on my shoulder. I just like, what was it? I got scolded at by a woman, um, this older woman in Portland. I had a Toyota Camry at the time. Great car, great mileage. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Toyota, if you're listening, <laughs> hey, just letting you know that on the it was a 2018 Toyota Camry. It's actually one smooth ride. <laughs> uh, I pulled in while she was opening her door, and she just like I, I was like I rolled out my window. Because it was like she was getting out of her car and I was like rolling in. Right. And she like swung the door open. She was like, ah! She did that. <clears throat> ah! And shut the door. And not all the way, but she like did this and she was looking at me and I rolled down my window immediately and I was like, I was in the spot and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I shouldn't have been going that fast. And she's like, no, you shouldn't have. Ooh. She's like, started scolding me about all sorts of stuff and I felt terrible. And I was like, I'm honestly so sorry. I couldn't even go into the store because I was like, if I bump into her in an aisle, an aisle, I'm gonna look like a fucking like battered dog. <laughs> and as I was driving down the street, like 
miles to the next door. It was just sitting down, just like I'm a terrible person. <laughs> like, like, like just absolute defeat. Like I, who am I? What, yeah. what am I doing? Drive. And it was. It, it's not the end of the world. But it was a defeat, dude. Yeah. I was a broken man at the moment. I called my wife. I called my mom. Fucking L. L streamer. It was. Okay, dude. Well, you know what? Here I was with a playful one, and you had to bring it up with some existential shit. So, you know what, viewers? Who is the more sympathetic person? Who do you feel bad for more? <laughs> I want to. I want people. I want there to be a, a, a vote in chat. Who do you feel bad for more? Vote in chat. Me? Chat? Me? Yeah. Hey, chat, is that you? <laughs> Chad, who? Hey, Chad, who do you? Hey, Chat, honestly, do you think that I was in the wrong there? What's that subreddit? It's like, am I in the wrong for this or whatever? Dude, I, am I love, an asshole? I love that subreddit because it's just people trying to have shower arguments with other yeah, people yeah. and it's like, you, mm -hmm. you lost, man. Just shut the fuck up. The amount of people in those two that's just like them confessing that they hate their mentally ill child yeah it's like <laughs> yeah, insane bro. to a point where i'm like i feel like it's a fetish of people that they don't they don't have those children yeah but they just want to go out and just spew some shit mm -hmm. you know oh me 34 m yeah. like my son jeremiah 9 f it's a female <laughs> <laughs> apparently jeremiah <laughs> Hey, Jeremiah, you know, He's just like, fluid, I man. wake up every morning and I just like wish that they weren't breathing. And you're like, God damn, like always a strong opening yeah. line with those. Yeah. I haven't been happy since I first laid eyes on my son. And you're like, God damn. I read one of those and it was like the daughter would um, shit her pants at the dinner table and then like shit in her hands and throw it all over the walls. <laughs> it, was just, it was crazy, dude. <laughs> And am I an asshole because, dude? Am I an asshole because I wish my daughter would die in her sleep? The man hasn't had a good dinner for fucking nine years. Imagine that. So wait, you're saying that she shits her pants, yeah, and then she she does she scoop it out or just, like how does she get the poop in her hands? I think she would also do something where she like as um as protest she would withhold protest. yeah literally as protest <laughs> i offer myself bro, as bro, tribute bro. some straight hunger game shit <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna kill hunter oh god damn no dude it was like she would withhold her um shit as like as as a form of protest she like <laughs> whenever basically the parents <laughs> <laughs> and whenever the parents would try to discipline her, she would not go to the bathroom in order to have a lot of shit. And then she would, yeah, she'd build up and then use it uh, against them, like putting it on the walls or just shit in her pants or. True. These are, this is also through this perspective, though, of a man who hates his child. So this could be. You no, know, dude, it's even worse. It was a build mom. It was a mother who hated it. Oh, it was the mom. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, like, you have to think about, like, how much of that is just in their head. Like, she's going up to her husband after, like, the, the you know, the person, their child's sleeping, like, Ugh, whatever. <laughs> okay, there's, there's, they're sleeping like a normal child. <laughs> and uh, she goes in, she's just like, I can't fucking take it. Yeah. I bet she, you know what I bet she does all day? I bet she eats. And we don't even know where she gets the food. She eats up like a little fucking little squirrel. Dude. So he's like, Becky, Becky, <laughs> calm down. She's a little fucking squirrel. And she shoves it all in her mouth and she eats it up and she doesn't take a shit all day she, she, he's like stop it you're gonna wake her up and she's like she eats she eats she eats and she builds it up and then you down the hallway you hear mom dude and she's like <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. so maybe it's just her going crazy and she's formulating these stories in her head now who I, knows i mean the i i i believed it because the story was so detailed and then sh the language was like she was really struggling to say I hate her. Yeah. And then all the comments were just people commiserating. Yeah. I feel you. They're just, you know, the coldest part was all the top comments were just offering her resources on how to offload the kid. What do you mean offload it? Like, like where? Like some like what? inpatient care where it was like, hey, they have facilities oh, okay. for this. So you're saying like put it into a home. Essentially, yeah. Put the child to put it into a home. Put, put the creature into a home. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the uh, I thought you were talking about like f like ways they could kill a child. I thought that's what you were saying, and <laughs> I was like, God it. damn, yeah, offload it. <laughs> Top comment. I know the perfect way to get rid of this one. Trust. I know exactly. Hey, honestly, <laughs> listen up. Tell her you're gonna be yeah, like t t talks and like has has the child like doing an arts and crafts session, but it's like. 
telling them how to fucking make anthrax in the oven. Yeah, oh my God. Tell her you're going to be playing with funny crystals that are going to smell like Starburst. All right, sweetie, have fun. Just in a full hazmat suit. Have fun, sweetheart. <laughs> Why does it look like that? You know, I had a funny thought the other day. Sorry, just, speaking sorry, about, just, just, sorry, just, just speaking about... Just speaking about... quick. Uh, <laughs> Damn. It's just like... I just picture the mom coming up with a game being like, do you want to play raw eggs again? And it's just like some sulfur solution. That's just raw eggs. <laughs> Let's play the raw, egg raw game. eggs. That's definitely a part of the Netflix documentary too. That's like what it's called is raw eggs. <laughs> it's like showing her, we used to play a game called raw eggs. And like, you know what I mean? Like the interrogation room yeah. footage. <laughs> That's fuck. That'd be fucking horrible. God. I had a, uh, I had a funny thought the other day. What if in an episode of Breaking Bad we find out that that Walt Jr. or Flynn, yeah, he has a pregnancy scare with one of the girls in his school? Oh, dude, <laughs> just a total tangent. Yeah, so it's like Walter, who's this giant drug lord, right? Yeah, and all of a sudden his, you know, knock, knock, knock. He's like, <laughs> he's like hiding money. Walter hide, is hiding money in the vent, right? He's like, <laughs> hold on, Dad, <laughs> you know, hold, hold on, Flynn. Dad, I gotta talk to you. And he's like sitting there and you hear his crutches shaking outside. And he's like, come on in, son. He's kind of like sweating. Come on in. And he's like, Dad, I can't, I'm in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> I'm, I'm not in some girl. <laughs> this, this, this female let me, let, let me do things. And she doesn't. <laughs> Let me talk to her. <laughs> oh, dude, it's just Walt following some sixteen-year-old around. Listen, you're gonna go to this clinic. Are you talking about Sarah, Sarah Jacobs, or whatever? And she, he's like, "Yeah, you know her. She's in my third period class." He like has her stay afterwards. Sarah, can I have a moment? She's like, "Yeah, what's up?" I heard you've been messing around with my son. She's like, "Yeah, I love him. Or we've been dating for a while, right? Whatever." And he's like, uh, <clears throat> he just basically starts threatening her and shit. Damn, and dude. Like, just... And also, I had this other bit, this other thought. What if Walter didn't even know his son's, like, he'd get mad that people were messing with his son, but he doesn't know what his son has. Yeah, like... So he'd be sitting there, so he'd be sitting there, and he's just like, you had sex with a kid with polio. She's like, I don't think that's what he has. He's like, <laughs> what, whatever he might have. <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> Yeah, the, the kid's got a. He's he's got a yellow fever. <laughs> the kid's got turf toe. I don't think it's turf toe. I don't think he'd be having to have both crutches if it was turf toe. This also is in a 1970s like gym coach person. I feel like. Uh, have you heard? Do people, do people even still call it turf toe? Uh, I don't even know you what turf toe about? is. I think it's like a form of like athlete's foot in a way. Like I think it's something where it's like your the side of your foot it's like it hurts to work on but it's like I think it's whenever you get a bunch of moisture in your sock and a lot of people got it like a lot of football players so like people that like would be running whatever and their uh, socks would get wet and it would like fuck up their skin or something like that I, can't uh, I forget did they even ever state what Walt <laughs> Jr. had um I can't remember no or I mean they probably did <clears throat> they probably did sorry I'm just laughing at. Walt going into fucking Heisenberg mode. And he's like, Sarah, you're going to take this. <laughs> Just slides plan V across her desk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want you to go to this address and you're going to talk to a man named Diego Sherman. <laughs> She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no questions now. Do you know who I am? And she's like, yeah, I mean, you're, you're Walter White. You're my chemistry teacher. He's like, oh, yeah, he has to snap back. He's like, oh, <laughs> she, she does know who I am. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hold on, sir. Uh, uh, okay, sweetheart. Just <laughs> <clears throat> is your family wealthy? Damn, just puts on the hat. I'm Eisenberg. <laughs> puts on the fucking hat and like just like glides away. <laughs> you don't see his lower half. He just like slides off camera. <clears throat> I can't remember where my train of thought. I don't know how I got here. That's Why fine. did I bring that up? We've been talking about a lot of mentally ill children today, dude. Yeah, we can. Uh... We could, we could get some other material in here just in case we got to trim it out. 
<laughs> I think it, I think I just got excited with the radio bit. I just it keeps uh, now that's also all where my mind's at. It's just ra- ra- have you seen radio before with Cuba Gooden Jr.? Nah, I felt guilty when I saw that when I saw that trailer. I just said. This is how meta I was as a kid. I saw that trailer and I thought I can't watch that movie because I'm I'm gonna be an asshole. And I just you know, in order for, really, yeah. I just I think every I think every kid goes in thinking that you know it's like haha silly. I remember that being we used to watch that and remember the Titans all the time at school. At school, yeah. That's crazy, dude. That's so crazy to pull a bunch of kids into a room and then put on radio and then expect them to like act appropriately, dude. The Fly, what? What a film, dude! Appreciate, appreciate yeah. the wreck, dude. What a I, film! I was I was flabbergasted when you said you've you haven't seen the fly. <clears throat> no, I'm not. That's, uh... that's Jeff Goldblum's breakout film. You know? Yeah, he literally broke out. Then I'm. Dis- yeah, I'll, I'll see myself out. I'll disconnect. That was bad. There hasn't. Ne- there's never been a glow up. Every time I watch the fly, I think about like why can't I wish I had that kind of glow up. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. No. I mean, first and foremost, I'm watching the dude just laughing. Like, damn, it'd be so sick to be tall. That dude was towered in that film. Are you joking? <clears throat> the fucking first of all, if you've never seen this movie, it was made in the '80s, and uh, it's based on something that was made in the '50s. Which I have to say, after knowing that, it changed my view of the film. Actually, it made me like it more. Because even though it was a more modern film, it felt like I was watching some like 1950s kind of like uh, Twilight Zone type story. Every uh, about every 30 years, we go to a phase where people remake horror films. I don't know why. In the 80s, you had the Thing remake of a Thing from Outer Space. You had the Blob remake from that from the 40s or 50s, and then the Fly. And there's obviously others, but those are like the three big prominent ones. And then 30 years after that. Early 2000s, you got remake of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's when we started seeing like Freddy versus Jason, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So I think, <clears throat> you know, in like 2030, we're going to be up for some more remakes. I'm gonna, I'm I put money down on Saw. I bet we get a whole new yeah. revamp of Saw and The Conjuring and all that other terrible bullshit out there. But maybe it'll be um, maybe it'll be fun though. Maybe it'll be good. <clears throat> Jeff Goldblum and The Fly is really funny though. Yeah. He's like a wheezy little guy. And by today's standards, their little meat cute is kind of creepy. He's it's just like touching her and shit. Weird. And he's like, it's so he's sitting weird. there. And she, she's like, uh, is Gina Davis, which first off, I love Gina Davis. <laughs> I fucking wait, love Gina wait, Davis. Wait, can, can I just say for a second? The, um, uh, the pacing is so funny. Cause like when I compare it to like movies now, they always open on like some crazy, you know. The exposition in most films now is very like, uh, I don't know how to say it. It feels very deliberate. You know, it's it's they know they're making a movie and they know people. Some people are need a bit more time to process this movie. It just throws you in. It's like this is a guy and he's talking to a girl, and you gotta like put the pieces together as they're talking quickly because shit's. A- you know what that's called, Noel? That's good filmmaking. You know what's? Do you know what I love about a movie about a rom com, and then we get exposition about where these people work and stuff instead of just showing me at their job. I mean, it's fucking terrible. You don't, you don't, you don't have to tell me. I, I love it. <clears throat> I, I loved like it was such a compared to I feel like a lot of movies now that I've seen recently. I it, it was kind of refreshing to be like, oh damn, there's not twenty minutes of fucking character establishment here. It's just like yeah, just context clues, like just. Run you with get it. a very frail, tiny, nerdy Jeff Goldblum walking around. He's like, hey, uh, uh, do you like my, uh, 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 I'm also a scientist. And Gina Davis is just like, okay, you fucking loser. <laughs> like, she just kind of like, immediately he's just like, all right, cool, thanks. And he's like, hey, I'd, I'd love to take you back and, uh, and show you some of the stuff. He kind of sounds like Sheldon a little bit in the movie. Yeah, like, really, really ch- chips over his uh, words a lot. The way, <laughs> just so people know, so like there's some... You know what I love too? Okay, they meet at a scientist convention. And what yeah. I loved is that you saw three seconds of that scientist convention. <laughs> yeah. It was the best. She She's a reporter, and he's just like, hey, I desperately want to have sex with you. <laughs> that's like that's like literally the beginning of the movie. And she's like, well, I guess I'll take a look at your little science experiment in your loft. And he's like, cool. And go back to I want to ram my yeah. uh, penis. <laughs> 
like I'm, I, I'm very tiny. I'm very frail. I don't have a lot of confidence. Uh, I would love if you could come and look at my uh, experiment. And she does. Because you know what? He's a fighter. Jeff Goldblum early on, charismatic as hell. Yeah. yeah he's got a little bit of danger, a little bit of mystique to him. I'm sure Gina Davis, she might be a little damp. A little damp in the pussy spot. <laughs> <laughs> a little damp? What do you mean by... <laughs> she turned on, dude. She's turned on. I don't. She's got a little. She's got a little marsh flats in her nah, fucking. Nah. In her, I'm probably in her little pasty thong. I'm gonna argue she was not. Really? I, nah. I think she was. Okay. Okay. Well, I, she went there, so you tell me. But anyway, I, I think Jeff she Goldblum just pe- is. No, nah, bro. That was her job. She she's a journalist. She wanted a story. This fucking weird. Why else would she go there if she was not interested? And he's like, oh, I prom. I, I'm telling you, it's cool. You know, if she was like. This guy's a fucking loser, whatever. She would just blow him off. But you know what? She's just like, you know what? I haven't been fucking okay. railed by a tiny man, a scrawny Jack Skellington kind of man. You know what? If I get a story out of it, I get a story out of it. But I'm telling you, condensation down there, dude. Damn. It looks like okay. a fucking, like an early morning window. Look, I'm, I'm not... Like, do do on a window. I'm not, I'm not even being contrarian. I think the do started forming <clears throat> after... Oh, after she sees the experiment. Yes. For sure. I don't yeah. I don't think it was I don't even think it was dewy. I don't even think it was that moist. I think it was just I think her Oh, I have to disagree. I have to disagree entirely. I'm talking like the dew that's on blades of grass in the morning. Not a lot, but it's just something that's noticeable. I thought it was she even sees softer an avenue. than that. I thought it was softer than that. I thought her <laughs> when I thought when Jeff made his you know, when he, when when he made his, you know, opening statements and was like, I wanna, you know, come back to my place, this and that. I think her vagina just kind of like, like opened its eye a little bit, like yeah, winked at the camera. Yeah, that's about it. But with that, with that wink, a little bit of eye liquid came out. I'm just saying that's a little <laughs> bit of fucking, that's a little bit of juice that she was just like, uh oh, am I ready? I hope so. <laughs> Guess what? I think I saw a key for my lock. You know what I mean? So she she's sitting there and she goes back to its place, and Jeff Goldblum in this movie has teleportation pods. This whole thing. Crazy science. And of course, she's like, this is unbelievable. But Jeff has the science to fucking back it up. And the biggest step of this movie, just to, you know, I'm not going to fucking talk about the entire movie or anything, no, but no, no. the biggest plot, the conflict of the movie is that he ha- it has to be ready for human humans to use. Yeah. It would, it would change travel, you know? Yeah. Particles forming, reforming. Is it the same person? Who cares? It's just... Can a person go from A to B, these pods? But, dude, you missed the... Hold on. Don't skip past the sexiest part. Her vagina has winked. They have met. They go back to Jeff's place. He shows her this teleportation device. She's peaked. And then, almost to like... This, to me, was almost like... What a what a tease. When he's like, mm-hmm. I need to... I need a, an inanimate object that's unique to you. And she goes, mm-hmm. okay. And what does she do? She takes off her stocking. Mm-hmm. <sighs> So I'm saying, he sniffs it and shit. Can you imagine that? He's like, <laughs> just oh, he grabs it. Looks like a fucking like a like a feral fucking dog or like a rodent. Then he like, just <laughs> runs out of the room. He doesn't yeah. even do the fucking. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's someone else walks in. It's not even his house. <laughs> he's like, gotcha, bitch! And jumps out the window. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But see, uh, that's what I'm saying though. Is that if she wasn't already kind of like ready. Because this is before even the experiment happened, right? Bro, I'm still she, dying at key to my lock. Yeah, dude. Fucking winking at the camera, dude. I saw that shit from a mile away. Bro. She had a little fucking business skirt on. I knew what was happening. <laughs> that shit was pumping down there like a goddamn beating heart. I know what was going on. I'm sitting there, and you know what happens, though, is he he successfully does the experiment, and now it starts a nice little relationship. It's a nice relationship in the movie. I like the dynamic between the two people. It was cute. But what really goes is Jeff decides, you know what, fuck it, I can't wait any longer. I'm going to try myself. And the dilemma of the movie is that he doesn't see that a fly is in the pod with him, and it changes his DNA. Not all at the same time, so he comes out, and he looks fucking, he's like, buffer? Yeah. He like comes out and come, not like obnoxious like Chris Evans and Captain America or anything. Yeah, he didn't take but he's just like he looks good. Old boy had a glow up. Yeah, you know, and he's just fucking left and right. I love that scene where Gene Davis is like, "God, we've been going all morning," and he's like, oh, "I don't give a fuck." Yeah, yeah. dude, those <laughs> scenes were crazy. She's like, "I'm done," and he grabs the, he's like grabbing the her like with the blanket, and he's like, "Come on." Come on. I was like, holy shit. 
Just a little more. She's like, fuck, I have to walk. I have to work, you know? And then uh, the movie, it, 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 yeah, I mean, she's like, I need to fucking be able, yeah. I, uh, but the, 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 the craziest thing though is I, is just from there, he's this sexy guy. And then it really doesn't take too long before he just turns into a total fucking monster. Yeah. That's what I love about 80s movies. It's like, there's no like buildup of like, that was, that was strange. It's like all of a sudden yeah. his fingernails are falling off. Yep. He fucking gets in that. I love that 80s over the top arm wrestling thing. He just snaps the guy's fucking hand. Dude. Gah! Or his arm. Boom! And then he just grabs yeah. that chick by the wrist and he goes, it's time. You come with me. He's fucking her all day too. I love how they paint. I love how they painted her in that film too. Just so wildly disrespectful. <laughs> oh, she was, I mean, come on. She was a lot lizard too. It's not like she was like sitting there. It's not like she was like at Sunday brunch. I mean, she was definitely, she's a, you know, tiger tail. They're paying, <laughs> people are paying for it, you know? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to spell it out. I mean, the old girl's a prostitute. What are you supposed to do? He sat there. He won the riches, dude. He was like fucking Blackbeard. Oh he found God. the X on the map and he got it. Oh and I tell you something God. too, is he starts becoming an alpha Chad. He's just like, what the fuck, Gina Davis? I can't remember her name in the movie. He's like, what the fuck, Gina? And she's like, you know, you're changing, you're, you're acting crazy. And he's like, oh, you know, he's he's hyped up. Yeah. He's eating sugar left and right and everything. And then his life just falls apart. And it's this beautiful crescendo. Once again, you just got to see it. It's fucking great. But the poignant part of this is I love when, with 80s movies, is there's no, like, you know, build up and what happens after. It's just like the movie just fucking ends. ends. Yep. Just ends. Yep. I mean, like, there's, <clears throat> and when the credits come up now, you're like, what? It's like, it's, 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 I was it's, it's a good way, though. I was howling. It's a good way, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. I just started dying it's laughing. So and I said, that's it. Yeah. It was so funny. End. I like I like to think about back then. They're just like, "Yep, yeah, this happens." Bada bing, bada boom, and end. Yeah, done. No, we, I don't give a f who cares what happens to the characters. The fucking story is done. Yeah, period. I like that stuff, dude. I I think it, I think it's genius, dude. I'm just I'm laughing right now. You know, I'm getting steamrolled over here. I'm trying to I'm trying to stand up. <laughs> I'm trying to stand up. What are you talking for about? For our girl in the bar, <laughs> you're like no. <laughs> Dude, there is. I mean, it, the thing is that stand standing up for what she got. She got what she wanted. She was there for that reason. You know, uh, the only thing she's probably not getting paid. You know, that's the only. That's the only problem. Bro, it's like she like she enjoys it for a bit. A bit. I'm not gonna say she enjoys it the whole time. I don't, you know, we'll, we'll let the viewers figure that part out. You know, <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, though, Jeff Goldblum, what a sex symbol in that movie, dude. Yeah, I mean, Jeff Goldblum. With his like weird fucking speech pattern and stuff, dude. When he when he becomes the fly, that shit is atrocious, yeah. man. I love it, dude. I could I tell. Just, no, dude. I was laughing. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. This is Hunter through and through. My favorite part of that movie is when he has a full gymnastic set in his <laughs> loft. <laughs> he has he has enough he has enough room in his loft to do like fucking triple flips and stuff. Oh my and everything. god, bro! The, there's this funny ass like choreographed moment where he does like the reverse spins and he tries to so in the forward flip he walks along the ceiling and then they yeah yeah try to cue him to go back. <laughs> And he tries to do like a little moonwalk across, and it's so stupid. Nah, dude, it's sick. <laughs> dude, he was sitting there. He's doing being a little show pony for Gina. He wanted Gina to be impressed, right? He's excited, and she's like, "Hey, you're acting like a fucking nut, dude. Bro. I don't know if you know this or not, but you're scaring the shit out of me." And he's like, "Why the fuck are you not impressed? Do you not see me? Look at this." He does his little Olympic set. Yeah, and then she does, and that's you know, he's like, "Well, then fuck off." Yeah. I'm not saying that's appropriate. I'm just saying that's what happened. Yeah, then he you know? then he ran out and he found his lot lizard. He did. He found his tiger tail. That's true. Dude, you're just tired, dude. No. I look at you, and I know you don't feel tired, but as a man, as a person, as a friend, dude, I just know when you're something something's fucking something happened today. I'm not gonna pry into it. I don't even want to know. And you're gonna say, Oh, nothing happened. Something happened today that shook you, dude. I think that I think I think also. No, it's not the, today. The, I could tell you what it is, but it's not today. What is it? Um, I go through these like bouts where, because you talk about defeat, you know, I'm I go through these bouts where I just feel very, um, I just feel very comedically not all there. It's not like you're going to be a hundred every day, but I guess yeah. I feel this pressure to be, uh, on it every day, which oh well, yeah, 
you know. Yeah, it's frustrating whenever it's just like uh it's like a small little waves of burnout or something or where it's just like your brain isn't just ca- like catching the jokes that maybe you want to hit or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It's just like one of those where I'm like, yeah. fucking, mm, I know there's something funny here and I'm just bombing all day, but it's fine. I'll get over it. Hey, it, was, it wasn't bombing at all today. Oh, you know? thanks, dude. You're so so encouraging. I like this. I think so. Thanks, dude. I'd like to I, I'd like to think so. Do you not do you not believe me? No, no, I do. But that's a that's an interesting question that you say that because that's that's a hard thing, you know? When, at least for me, you know, when when friends and stuff have tried to be encouraging in the past, I have a hard time like accepting and then believing it. I still, you know, I used to go through pretty like heavy periods where a friend would be like, "No, man, it's all good," and I'd be like, "No, you don't know how." Oh well, you should. <clears throat> that I mean, that's rule number one, dude. Trust nobody, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. That makes you really. I mean, I, that leads a very happy have- life. Yeah, well, you know, hey, listen, I'm not saying that it's the correct thing. I'm just saying that's instinctually the thing of nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. Everybody's an idiot. Yeah. And it's just like, it, it's unless somebody can say the exact thing that you want them to hear, then it's uh, mm-hmm. it's it's just, it's void. It's negative. Mm-hmm. I've had, there's been plenty of days where people have said the right things to me or they've been kind or whatever, but it's just not what I'm wanting to hear. So it just goes one, 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 out one year. Fuck! It goes in one ear and out the other. And... Uh, you know, it is what it is. Fuck's sakes. God damn it. <laughs> it goes ear one. No. <laughs> I swear. I honestly, I think that like my brain is deteriorating. Honestly, like I, I've been, I've been thinking about it. I went to a doctor or I, and I told, I don't even know. I told you this. I signed up for fucking speech therapy. No, you didn't tell me that. Yeah. I, I, I signed up for speech therapy. How's that going? It's okay. I feel like I'm in fucking preschool because it's just stuff of like enunciation and stuff. But like I listen to myself back, I sound like a fucking like monster. <laughs> I blend all of my stuff together. I, I will say thoughts. It's probably happened in this podcast multiple times. I just talk about something and then I don't even finish the thought and I go on to something else. Nah, it's just dude, like you're, I'm a fucking monster, dude. If I, I, nah, it's a conversational monster. No, nah, if there's someone who empathizes <laughs> with that shit, it's me. I fucking I do that so much in the worst way. So nah, you've been good. Dude, this episode is just it's just, you know, it's picking your boy up when he's down. That's the moral of the story, dude. Picking your boy up when he's down. No one Everybody who's listening to this, you're not really attractive. Yeah. It's just, but that's not your fault. That's just like the genetic lottery of what happened. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Like everybody else is ugly too. So you will find somebody. It's not like you're the ugliest person (laughs) in the room. And I think that's like actually a very positive thing to think about. Yeah. Accepting, accepting your faults and that you're an ugly person. Mm Mm-hmm. And as long as you're kind and that you can, you will get, an, uh, you'll be able to date or marry another ugly person. <clears throat> I can't say that I'm I'm really fucking attractive, but. I just disagree. <laughs> Sorry, just... Dude, I tell you, you got a fucking pretty, you got a pretty household. As soon as I walked up to your house for the first time, the door opened. I saw like your, your, uh, your wife in the standing in the background, your perfect dog. <laughs> And everything, I was like, "This is a pretty home, <laughs> not just like the home." I'm like, "This is a pretty home." That's what I said. Everything in this house is pretty. You know what I mean? Feels like a little fucking like modern museum or something. I didn't want to touch anything. Oh, uh, dude! I sat down. I act like it was like almost as if I never knew how to sit before. You're like, "Have a seat." I was like, "I've never seen a couch like this. This is a pretty couch." <laughs> You come over to my house and you're like walking around acting like you know what you did when you came to my house. What you and you, your wife and your boys came out. I love your house. You sure, you were sitting there and you talked to me as if I was your fucking grandma in a retirement home. <laughs> no, I did not. Com- complimenting her room. Oh, this is nice. Do you sleep here? And I'm like yes. <laughs> you're like you're like oh wow you have so much room out here. You do. Didn't you? Dude. You, <laughs> dude, no, no, no. In my defense. In my defense. You do. You do. <laughs> dude, you're okay. The the vaulted ceiling you have in your living room is <clears throat> sick. That gigantic fucking fan you have is dope. Uh your back gigantic fan. What are you talking about? I thought you had about? a big ass fan in your living room. No. You're probably thinking about someone else's house, no. dude. 
I've not been to many you, homes. You go to so you go to so many homes. I don't. They're so pretty. I don't actually. And you forgot about mine. Mine's a small room. Remember that small room you were in? Cold had no windows. That was, <laughs> okay, that was get the home. fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that moment of realizations. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was genuinely admiring your home. I actually left your place and said, damn, it's fucking sick how many rooms that guy has. And then Alina was laughing, yeah. and then I was like, he can just have a room for things. If he wants to have an extra room with some bullshit in it, he can do that. It's nice to have a little bit of elbow room. You know what I mean? It's sick. <clears throat> Be able to have the chickens and ducks and stuff. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to moving, though. I, at some point, I need to. I, that needs to happen. Have you um, Have you looked at any any places? I've been doing the thing where I get depressed and I look on Zillow. Mm. You ever You ever do depressed Zillow? Ah, uh, dude, don't even get me started on depressed Zillow, dude. That's my fucking <laughs> I love set Zillow. right there. I fucking love. Uh, I love depressed Zillow, dude. I sit there and I look around. And I'm just like, when you feel like an absolute fucking loser and you go through your social media and you see all these people doing better than you that are more attractive than you that have more money mm -hmm. genetic win. more genetic wins ex infinitely more sexualized than you and you go fucking true well maybe i'll just move away somewhere and you know hide and feel good about yeah, myself yeah. and then you go look at the properties and and you uh you you have a budget in mind where you're like i could see myself realistically getting this and they're all terrible yep all the houses are so what do you do next you bump it up to like two million yep no, and you're like, you're like, now it's just depressed. It's real depressed, Zillow, mm -hmm. because it's like I'll never have this house ever. Yeah. And then you're sitting there and you're looking around. And you're like, well, since I've already looked at two million, I might as well look at stuff that's like five, six million. Why not? Looking around, and then after a while, I'm not even looking. I'm just looking at like the life I wish I had. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, it'd be so sick if like <laughs> uh, I'm 54 and my son rolls up with his family and they're like Land Rover, and he's like, he's like, Dad. Mind help me with this? And I'm like, you know, like, I'm just thinking, I'm like outside on the driveway, and I'm just like, damn, you know, hey, it's nice to see you, Jacoby. I don't know what his name would be. Yeah. Hey, man. Then all his then all his kids hop out of their uh, souped up Land Rover, and they're like, grandpa. Yeah. Oh, no, basic model. Ba basic model. Okay, yeah. basic model. My, son, my son's a general manager in O'Reilly's Auto Park. Right, and then his kids hop out of the car, and they're like, grandpa. And you're like, Grandpa, Grandpa. And they're like, can we can we ride the ATVs again? And you're like, yeah, I paved the whole three-mile course right up just, for you. just for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's for you going out there, Kyle. <laughs> hey, and I get down because I like my granddaughter more. Hey, Becky, give her like a Tootsie Pop. Don't tell your brother I gave you this. And the dad comes up, and then I have a son, talk with my son. He's like, hey, man, I just need to talk to you. We walk around the front. I have a beautifully landscaped yard yeah. in the front. Nice little pathway. We walk up, kind of like a weird Aspen kind of cabin slash modern design. Yeah. Very, very tasteful. Mm -hmm. We walk up, and we sit down on my rocking chair. I'm like, what's what's going on? He's just like, me and Becky are getting a divorce. And I'm like, oh, my God, have the kids known? You know, I get into a very serious conversation with my son. And I was there sitting there, and I, you know, my wife comes out because I'm happily married, and I'm just like, "Listen, you can, you can trip and you can falter, but guess what? It takes a man to stand on two feet." And my son starts tearing up, whatever. And I give him a beer. I don't usually drink beers, and he's like, "Really?" And I'm like, "Go ahead." And we clink it, and we kind of just sit on my yard, and we look at the fucking gorgeous view. Yep. And I'm like, and also don't forget that one day, man. And I grab his shoulder, and I, I'm like, "This will be yours." Yep. But, and, and all so that's and, what I experienced when I'm on Zillow. And you handpicked all that. Mm -hmm. All that. Just off the pictures, you're like, this is what it's going to be. I look at one picture mostly of like one room that I like, <laughs> and I just like freeze frame, <laughs> and my eyes get really glossy and like irritated because of the blue light, and I start tearing up a little bit, and my wife's like, hey, what's wrong? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I do that. Yeah. And I just have to close my phone and not look about it. And I'm like, I'm, ha I'm happy here. You know, I'm, this is I'm happy with this place. You know what, Alina and I started doing a combat depressed Zillow because yeah. because here's another thing. You know, the same way that Instagram depressed Trulia, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just going yeah, to yeah. <laughs> depressed Redfin. Um, not you know, kind of how like your social media is always like showing you people that are better than you. Um, yeah. you know, Redfin does that. They show you these homes that you can't afford. They're like three for sale in your area, and they're all ten million dollars. And you're like, mm -hmm. I don't fucking come on now. But uh, yeah. so what we started doing was he just started going to the open houses. Oh, 
Really? They, that, that that doesn't hurt more? I feel that would hurt more. No, because once you- It doesn't. No, dude. It's like, I've never- I'm surprised. I've never used Tinder, but I've heard young people talk about, like, they go on Tinder and then the pictures don't line up when they get there in person. It's like something's off. When we go in person- Oh, so you go see the faults. You go there for the faults. Oh, we go there okay. to call her ugly. That's what we do. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. And we go there and we're like, this this is, this over here, this right here. How many times have you, how many, how many times have you rolled up on a place though and it's just like, great. Um, and you're trying to like make excuses. You're just like, I hate the floor. But in the back of your head, you're just like, oh my God. It's like Patrick Bateman. Oh no, like there, when he's talking about the business card. There was one like around the corner from our place and I got there and I'm like, <laughs> countertops are bad. This sucks, man. Just not looking at this crazy view with a pool that it has. <laughs> Doing that kind yeah. of shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Noel, we need to leave. Coming. Whatever. Yeah. You go to a really expensive dinner that night too to like kind of like spend some money, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? To like have that like I'm doing good. How much is it? I got it. And you go back home and you just your house you kind of like kind of feels like a ugly sweater. Yeah. You're like That's what you do when you first walk in. You kind of do that sh Yeah. Whack. Start picking at your clothes a little bit. You're like, "Here we are again." Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. All right. Well, fuck. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I hope people. I hope that that's not just something. That I. I feel like the press Zillow has to be something. That has to be like a. No, dude. That's of a, a real thing. That's a definitely a real thing. Every everybody's doing it. Every millennial. I feel like doing everybody's it. doing it. I. It was fucked up. You know, on your iPhone where it tells you like, what what apps you've been looking at the longest. People usually have like YouTube, Instagram, whatever. Mine was Zillow. That's crazy, bro. That's Zillow. Actually, insane. <laughs> I look at Zillow so much on my phone. That's crazy, man. You got to get out of there. I'll be defeated at work. I'll be making cartoons or whatever. And I'll just sit there and pull up my phone and just get locked into something and just like fantasize, dude. Dude, I think you really, just based on what I know about your place, I think you really, you got to go move to the woods. I think that's what you want. I want just, yeah, more, a little more elbow room. Also, you know what I miss more than anything is rain. Yeah. That's why I want to move to Washington, dude. I just love cloudy skies and nice rain. Whenever I there's I've never been happier in my life than whenever I get to wake up, you don't have shit to do, and you just hear little pitter patters on your on your window of a little rain. And you're like, oh god, you just want to sleep in for a while. You fucking wake up. Yeah. Maybe you beat maybe you beat your cock a little bit in bed before you get up, whatever. <laughs> then you sit there and you go enjoy a nice, nice cup of coffee. You're like eat you're drinking a cup of coffee at like eleven thirty. It took you that long to get up, and then you make a nice fucking lunch. It's like a heaven, dude. It's heaven on earth. <laughs> you know, you just you wake up and the soft sunlight kind of comes through the window. Can't open your eyes; it's kind of blind, and you're like. Okay. The, then the overcast covers it a little bit, and you get a little bit of that wind, and it comes through. You left the window open last night, and just a, just a smidge, and the wind comes through, and the sound smells of outside kind of dance in your nose and then you go let me beat my cock for a little bit <laughs> yeah you, you reach you reach over to the your armrest and you notice you don't have any lotion you're kind of digging around but you don't actually have enough energy or effort to like actually get up or do anything so you just you reach real deep in the back of your throat and just hock the fattest loogie in your hand oh my God. And, you, and you just fucking beat away dude Amish lotion right there oh and you're just like you're like oh Amish lotion, dude. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, dude. Take me back. So yeah, I want to move to Washington, really bad. Yeah, man. I think you gotta go. Well, look, I need to. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Uh, what a what a what a what a ride this one was. Um, I think everybody that's listening to this should watch The Fly. You should watch and The Fly. And I think that if if you're a guy, I just want everybody to just try spitting a loogie into their hand once and masturbating. Oh man. No, I wouldn't. You know, I would. I would encourage men. You know, challenge the norm. Just go. Just go raw. Just go barehanded. I don't agree with that. I tell you what. You you see real men. Men start noticing how bad their breath smells when they start spitting stinky saliva into their hand. Mm. Like I need to brush my teeth more. Mm. Keeps you into check, and you get a little something out of it. You know. I'm gonna argue Is that it, uh, you know, if you self chafe, mm. you know, it uh, builds some character. You're building up a fucking turtle's neck is what you're doing, dude. Yep. This shit's gonna be tough, rawhide skin. Yep. The build builds character. You know?
Your fucking your dick is gonna. If you be no, nah, your dick. If you become so <laughs> attached to it though, and you're like you st- you're like let's say you have a girl come up right, and she's like you know like trying to maybe she gets like lotion or something. He's like no, dry hand it. Yep. And she's never experienced that before. Oh, and she's trying to start a fire. You know, no, no, like, no, no. You do it enough, know, dude. your dick's gonna be you know it's gonna be tough as an islander's foot. You know, Hawaiians walk around the island all day. Just iron fucking resolve in that skin. Climbing those coconut trees, yeah. and grabbing them and fucking <laughs> breaking them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just your dick's going to be able to do. It's going to be <laughs> Dude, raw I, as shit. I, I, this is going to be an ongoing theme of every time we have a goodbye message, you're just going to say some shit that's going to get some people into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to have a little bit of a fucking oopsie daisy and they're just like, damn it, Noel, you led me astray again. <laughs> but they keep coming back. I should have listened to Hunter. I should have spit in my hand. Now my penis. I should have just hocked a fat Lukey in my hand. Now my penis. Eat three. Have a big bowl of Tootsie Rolls by you, right? Yeah. Eat two of them. You get that nice, like, thick saliva feel in your mouth. All that glucose and shit. And just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was right rough, in your fucking dude. hand. <laughs> I know. That's what that I'm was saying. Rough. Boom. <laughs> Slabber that shit up. Feel like you stuck your fucking dick in a beehive. Feel like you have honey all over your dick. It'd be sick. <laughs> all right. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>